Okay, today we're uh, going to be painting this little red barn that I painted a few times before. It's been a long time since I painted it. Don't even know if the same people own it anymore. But um, let me go over my colors really quick. Titanium white, cad yellow light, cad orange, uh, yellow ochre, transparent red oxide, cadmium red, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, viridian, and chromium green oxide. So first thing I'm gonna do is just taking a kind of a reddish mixture tone down and I'm going to uh, just tone in or lightly draw in the, uh, the barn itself, starting the, with the roof. And I wanna fix my horizon line. That's gonna be probably right about here-ish. There's some, uh, I'm almost directly in front of the barn. It's uh, pretty much completely front lit. It's got this little side building here. And the red part comes right down to about here and then there's this dark area and then you have the ground. The snow is already starting to melt. Just a little bit of a bummer. But I'm probably just going to ignore that part, the part about the snow melting, and just stick it in anyway. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. <clears throat> First thing I'm going to go for is my darkest darks. And from what I can see, that is right in this area here, this little uh, little cubby hole or something like that they have going on down there. Just stick that in. And it's, I have it almost a, pretty much a full strength dark there. But when I look at it, I can see some cool tones in there, just barely. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of white, a little bit of um, ultramarine blue, and some alizarin, and just kind of apply that in there. And over here, there's another dark. That dark is definitely cooler and lighter. So I'm going to get that in there. As the, um, there's another door right there. These are doors in the barn, I guess. As the sun keeps going, swinging over, this part is going to end up more and more in shadow. So I'm, that's probably the fastest changing element in this painting or in this scene. So I'm going to uh, try to get that blocked in right away, those shadows. I kind of like how they are. dark in my paint mixture no big deal <clears throat> as it goes up here it, it's greener up here and it's bluer down there so I'm going to try to show that here it's greener it's kind of darker and warmer that might be a little too much but And let's show a little bit of that blue down there. Got 
some dogs barking at me. Okay, that's a pretty faithful representation of it, I think. When I get the red blocked in, I might need to uh, make some adjustments to that. in there where the sunlight's coming in okay All right, let's get some of that red blocked in. Gonna clean this off. The dogs have discovered me, I can hear. It's always an adventure planner painting. You have dogs to contend with, people, really talking to people, people who seem annoyed, <laughs> um, wind, changing light, rain, you name it, and just the uh, incredible time constraint. Get a block in a general tone. I'm gonna have to rework this tone quite a bit because one one tone, even though this is a red barn, one tone of red is not gonna cover it. There's lots of little uh, variations going on uh, between warms and cools. That need to be suggested in order to uh, get it correct. I apologize for the traffic. Um, unfortunately, this barn is right along a road that used to not be quite as busy in the past, but as many things, it's gotten busier over the years. So there's gonna be a lot of traffic. Not much I can do about that. And because of the importance of color here, I'm going to block in some of these greens back here. Because they're gonna help me gauge the colors correctly. And the values. There's this uh, pine over here that's uh, getting a lot of sunlight. It's got a lot of green in it. But then we transition very subtly to more of a gray tone with the uh, the leafless trees that are back there. And it's the same value as the uh, pine so when i put this in to know it's the same value i basically don't want to see any separation between the value of the pine and the value of these other trees when i block this in 
if I see separation, then I know that I have uh, incorrect values. Now already as I'm putting this in, I'm looking at my barn and I can see that it's too light and too warm. So that's why blocking in, um, especially when you're dealing with color, uh, getting everything blocked in, at least somewhat, is a tremendous help. As I uh, tell my students, I teach um, online painting classes through Zoom. And as I tell my students, you know, because they're not there in person, sometimes, you know, they're, uh, they want to get the exact same colors I have, and you don't have to, you just need to get the relationships correct. And one of the big ways of doing that is uh, get some stuff blocked in and see where you're at. If you want to learn more about these classes, uh, just go to my website, jasontako.com, and click on Workshops, and you can check it out. It's only so many spaces, so if you're interested and it's open, um, you might want to jump in and give it a try. We work on one painting over a four-week period of time. I take you from start to finish, critiques. Um, Q&A session, all the sessions are recorded so you can watch them later if you can't make it or you get lifetime access to that. Okay, we're getting a little cloud cover over, coming over us too. It's very thin. I hope it doesn't stick around too long. Uh, let's get the roof kind of implied there. It's rusting, so there's some warm undertones, which is kind of what I'm trying to imply here. Oh, the wind's starting to pick up. It is cold out today. I took my uh, coat off. I might have to put it back on. Because uh, that wind's going to start biting soon. I want to suggest a little bit of these cooler... Um, colors on the roof from the uh, sheets of aluminum that have not yet rusted. There's also one that's quite a bit lighter than the others. I want to get that in because I want to key off of that. So I'm going to try to get an approximate value there. I think we got it. Okay, another important color that I want to get in before I start in any details is the sky color. We're dealing with the blue sky back there. And that's definitely a more um, solid color, if you will, that I can gauge off of, especially for the, um, for gauging the red of the barn. That was a loud car. Some thin, wispy clouds moving in and out of this area. I'm just 
just blocking that in, keeping it pretty thin. Yeah, that kind of rhymed. All right, on the bottom, there's some green grass from the well, greenish, I should say. It's more of a kind of a brownish green grass. That's from the snow melting. I might, I'm going to probably show a lot less of that than what's in here. I really wanted to get the snow in. I don't like this. I painted this barn before and I'm not as fond of it. Um, when it's not in snow, it's just my preference. Now I'll make sure my brush is very clean. I want to apply some of the snow to cover up that, uh, stark white here in the foreground. Okay, so we have a uh, basic lock-in <clears throat> of our colors. I want to just texture it up here a bit. Especially when I'm dealing with uh, architecture like this. It's, I have a tendency sometimes to get too perfect. So sometimes when I have a block in, I will do that. Clean out the palette a bit. So now let's go back in and play with that red barn. Getting that red color the way I want it is uh, very important. It's the most important reason I'm out here. Freezing my tail off. Red is one of the most challenging, uh, red, red in sunlight. For some reason, I just really struggle with red in sunlight. So if this turns out, I'll be pretty happy. It's so easy to just go too red, too gaudy with it.
And the thing to remember when you're doing this is you're, you know, the, the colors are not um, pure red, like cadmium red as they come out of the tube. You're dealing with an old weathered barn. And so it's been affected by a lot of things. And boy, the traffic really picked up around here. There's a shadow in here. Let's get that shadow in. I think that's gonna help me gauge stuff. Gauge this red color. I found when you're uh, painting subjects, getting the shadows in. If you're really struggling with it, you know, get put in the shadows. They can uh, really help you gauge how things are supposed to look. Okay, one thing I think I was doing is I was getting too light with the uh, <coughs> value of the barn. I'm gonna scrape off some of this lighter paint, this thicker lighter paint. It's, uh, if you're really off, just get that paint off there. Otherwise you're just gonna fight with it. Somebody's texting me. It's probably my mom. I want to say too, I'm painting under an umbrella. I always try to keep the sun off of my palette and off of my canvas. Um, otherwise, I end up painting too dark. Some artists can do it. I can't. I need, I need to get that sun away from the palette. That's definitely better. I'm liking the value more. Okay, another thing I want to get in there is there's some darks in that tree over here, this evergreen tree. So I want to block those in. I should have probably had those in initially. That's going to help me... Uh, gauge the value of this uh, barn also. That is definitely my mom. Only my mom texts me that often. She'll probably later be like, why didn't you respond? <clears throat> Okay, that definitely helps some. 
I should have put that those darks in a lot sooner. That would have uh, helped spare me some grief on this uh, on this barn. Not that we're doing too bad. I mean, things are going okay here. There's a driveway that goes around this barn. I'm just going to suggest it just with some uh, color in that. I'm not going to... Uh, try to paint it all in because it just doesn't look nice but I think the value is important at least for now to help me uh, gauge where things are okay now this is a spot where you can really uh, step back and look at it and see how it looks see if you're uh, you know, if you're if you're good, if your values are good, if they're not good, if you need to make adjustments. Another trick I do is I use one of these sometimes, and I look through the subject and look at my painting and see if anything jumps out. And it's looking pretty good. It's just a piece of red acrylic. Um, just so you know, those things do not work good if the subject is an intense red. This is it. This is not an intense red, but if it's a very intense red, it'll just that red will show up as white through that acrylic. So just uh, just a little warning there. That wind is biting cold. I grew up in rural Minnesota, so that kind of helps me, but only so much. The people who own this thing are apparently outside listening to country music. I don't know why the heck they'd be outside today, but of course I'm outside today. I guess I can't say a whole lot. They're probably looking at me wondering what the heck's that guy doing out in the field. It's nice and quiet there for a little while, but now the traffic tra traffic is coming back. It seems to come in spurts, I've noticed when I paint. There's these little uh, openings and things like that, you know, where the door is. I'm using the palette knife to put those in. Keep it kind of loose.
Actually, I'm going to stick with this a little bit longer. With these darks. Because there's some right there, too. That's what kind of makes these old barns for me, is just getting in these neat little... Uh, nooks and crannies and stuff like that. Whew. That wind is starting to pick up. It's a very slight breeze, but it doesn't take much out here. Just freeze your hands off. Sorry if I'm complaining too much about it, but. So used to having my palette or, or my brush holder over there. I keep wanting to go over there to put my brushes away. I um, moved it over here because of the uh, position of the sun, where I have to have the umbrella and where I have to have the camera set up. Okay, now up here, they have some neat shutter things going on. I always kind of like these. One of the reasons why this barn is really neat. Let's put in some thick paint. Gently lay it over. There's little dark slats in this, in these things. I'm not going to worry about that right now. It's too darn cold. This is just a sketch. I did take a photo and I could put those in in the studio if I want to and I reserve every right to do so. I'm not a purist plein air painter. Some, some painters are, they're, I've done plein air events and they'll talk about how they're, uh, you know, completely plein air, they never do anything in the studio. That's great, but I also know some really top-notch artists who uh, just don't buy into that. They're like, hey, the end product is what really matters. Planner painting was for sketching, for capturing the light and the things that a camera can't capture. And then, you know, back in the studio, you can make the adjustments you, you desire. That's kind of more my approach. 
especially when it's below freezing and you're out here not wearing gloves. This shadow here is really moving down now. It's a lot lower than what it was before. I'm going to make some slight adjustments to it. Now that I have uh, most everything blocked in. Something else I like to do is kind of scratch back into the uh, surface there to imply some more texture. It's a something very important that I forgot to do. So the block in was the lights going across here, but I have this door in the same darkness. It should be picking up some of the sunlight here. I would have felt like a real heel had I called this painting done and not and not done that.
there. That's definitely a lot better. There's a tree over here. It's picking up a lot of greenish tone. Just kind of mixing back into this. When I get to these earth tones, sometimes I just kind of get a little sloppy here, I guess, and just uh, mix right into what's already there. It works at times. I don't always recommend it. But sometimes it can work pretty good. And right now it, it seems to be. This tree just kind of goes up into the sky and goes over the barn too over the roof of the barn. By the way, if you're wondering what kind of, um, what I'm painting on, this is oil prime linen. I think it's Clausen's. I think that's how you pronounce it. And if you go to my blog, I have an instructional art blog, by the way, for those of you who do, do not know. It's mysketchjournal.com. The link below. And... When you go to that, if you click on uh, the resources link, I have some different uh, articles, just short ones, where, uh, where I show you know, what kind of materials I use, and there's links to them too. They are affiliate links, I will full disclosure on that. Um, but f affiliate links, if you don't know how they work, it basically just, if you use them, you, you, when you buy, um, the merchant gives me um, a little bit of commission. It costs you nothing more. Um, 
it's just the merchant just uh, basically gives me a little commission. Hey, thanks for bringing us the business. You don't have to use it. You can, if you don't like that, um, you can just uh, Google, you know, the the materials yourself and go buy them without the affiliate links. But if you want to help me out, um, that would be awesome because uh, I don't get paid to do this part of it. So, <laughs> so I'll take any help I can get, but it's totally up to you. I'm not even required to tell you that. I am on the website, but I'm not required to tell you that here in the YouTube thing because I don't have the affiliate links on the YouTube channel. But um, just thought I'd be a nice guy and do that. So I try to be a nice guy. But anyway, it's Claussen's, and I, I really like it. It's a nice uh, linen. I just cut a piece off and tape it to a piece of masonite board. That way, you know, if the painting doesn't turn out, no big deal. I used to, um, you know, use like a $15, $20 panel when I would do this. And, and then you just kind of end up with... Uh, you know, these studies that, you know, if nobody wants to buy it, well, you kind of, and plus if you don't want to sell it, that's it's a big thing for me is a lot of times I don't want to sell these studies. I want to use them to make uh, nice studio paintings and then sell the studio paintings. So I can keep these and then just repaint this on a panel and I can make changes, compositional changes to it, improvements. You know, put in that little business there and the shutters that I was talking about, all that stuff. When I have time and I'm not half freezing to death while doing this, the wind did die down a little bit. So that is nice. By the way, uh, if you like this, if you're enjoying this, I should have said this earlier, um, and give me a thumbs up. YouTube likes that, then they show it to more people, and that helps me out also, and subscribe. Uh, please subscribe, because that really helps out. And like I said, if you're interested in uh, learning some more, uh, check out my workshops. I do a lot more talking and a lot more explaining in my workshops. And we don't paint this fast. We paint a lot slower than this. I do also have an advanced uh, version that I'm working on of the workshops where um, it's one-on-one. -on -one. The workshops you're painting with a group, some people really like that. Other people might want some more personalized attention, so I'm trying to accommodate both. But anyway, I'll check it out. Gonna have to ask myself, you know, how far do I want to take all this? You know, how much detail do I really need to show here? And that's definitely a personal question. That's up to you. Really, especially in sunlight, you only have, you know, a couple hours maximum to do this and for me what's more important is I just get a 
accurate statement of the colors and values. And everything else, you know, I can, I can do the details and all that stuff back in the studio if I want. My main concern when I do this is I want um, to look at this and I want the viewer to look at this and say, yep, feels like you're there. They were there. That's, that's how it. That looks like you were uh, standing right there. And detail is not going to do that for you. What is going to do that for you is accurate colors and values. So if it's really cold and you, know, you don't have all the detail in, don't worry about it. Get those colors, get those values, and then uh, be on your way if you want to. The other option is you can always come back the following day provided that the uh, lighting conditions are the same and work on it some more. Um, I'm in a slight pickle on that because part of the reason why I wanted to do this is because of, is because of the snow and the snow is melting. We're supposed to get some more tomorrow, but then it's going to be cloudy tomorrow. So, so much for that idea. If you're doing um, low light scenes, like right before sunset or right at sunrise, um, sometimes you have to come back the next day. And because you just don't have enough time to finish everything and get it accurate. Okay, so I brought you guys in close here so you can see some of the things I'm going to hopefully do.
just using the palette knife to make suggestions of all the little branches and foliage you see. And one of the things to do to help with that is squint at your subject. Don't try to paint every little thing. You don't have to. Especially plein air painting. Save that for the studio. Just get a nice suggestion in.
putting the snow paint on very thick. And what I do is I just, I do a stroke and then I wipe my brush to get the uh, grass paint off. And I'm kind of composing this. It's, I'm not painting it exactly how it is. I'm painting it more how I want it to be. I am leaving some of that grass in. Kind of show how it was melting. Now back in here, there's some uh, snow in the shadows. Definitely want to get that in there. Way back here, I see some hints of snow, like in some distant hills. Gonna go back into the grass pattern. I just wanna make that a little more interesting. So I'm gonna cut back a little bit into the snow here and there. can tell I'm not freezing anymore. The wind died down, otherwise I wouldn't be sitting here messing with this compositional stuff. I'd just be getting the heck out of here. <laughs>
Okay, now they built a fence. Actually, there's a white post that angles right up there. Should probably switch to a brush. Get these little shadows in there. I think a big tractor trailer is coming. Yep, I was right on that one. I just put some snow right there. And I'm gonna try a little bit of artistic liberty. Taking some CAD. I know you can't see this because I have the camera right on the uh, painting and no longer on my palette. But I'm taking titanium white and mixing just a touch of yellow ochre into it. I'm gonna try some snow on the roof. It's not there but it was there at some point, I'm sure. Not sure if I like that or not. Don't mind that little snow highlight up there. I might leave that. Because there is some, actually it's not even snow up there. It's There's some little light things going on in the roof, little reflective things. So I'll put those there. I think we're almost done here.
said, go uh, check out my blog and mysketchjournal.com. Go to my website, jasontaco.com, if you want to see uh, you know, the workshops and things like that that I do. Love to have you there. Take all levels for the basic workshop. I also got some other videos on my YouTube channel here to check out. So make sure you don't miss those and please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. It really helps out. Mm -hmm.